بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاهما بعد. Today's wisdom from the Quran is a very profound principle. It is one of the most deep and complex verses in the Quran. In fact, one can speak many hours about this. It has repercussions in epistemology and philosophy and ethics and law. But of course, time is limited, so we will summarize. Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 100. Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 100. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ لَا يَسْتَوِي الْخَبِيثُ وَالطَّيِّبُ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكَ كَثْرَةُ الْخَبِيثُ Say, the filthy and the pure are never the same. Even if the filthiness seems to overcome you, even if the quantity of evil seems to overwhelm you, good and evil will never be the same. The tayyib and the khabith will never be the same. Even if the khabith, its quantity, is overwhelming, it will not be the same. Now this ayah demonstrates for us that truth transcends numbers. That reality is not based upon what the majority think. That tayyib and khabith, and of course what is tayyib and khabith? Khabith is that which you find disgusting. Khabith is filthy. Khabith is that which is putrid. Khabith is that which is rotting. And the tayyib is the opposite. It is wholesome. It is nourishing. It is pure. So Allah says the khabith and the tayyib are never the same. Even if the quantity of khubth in the earth, even if the sheer volume of filth is going to overwhelm you, it doesn't change. Truth and falsehood will be distinct from one another. And of course, the Quranic message is very clear in this regard. In fact, if we were to derive another principle from the Quran, actually, we wouldn't be too far from the truth if we were to say the Quran generally criticizes the majority. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ The majority of mankind are not going to believe. Allah says, وَلَتَجَنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ فَاسِقِينَ The majority of them are going to be fasiqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Most of them are fasiqoon. So the Quran typically criticizes the majority. And Allah says the believers are the minority. وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Few of my servants are going to be shakur. وَقَلِيلٌ مِنَ الْآخِرِينَ Few of the later people are going to be pious and righteous. And this ayah, the khabith and the tayyib are not the same. Even if the khubth is overwhelming, it underscores this point. So to give you some examples, the khabith and tayyib is not the same when it comes to belief. Iman in Allah is pure. Iman in Allah is tayyib. It is the height of being tayyib. Even if the majority of the world rejects Allah, even if agnosticism and atheism has become the norm, it doesn't change the fact that Iman is pure and kufr is impure. Another reality is with regards to actions and deeds. Prayer is pure. Virtuous is to give charity. Fasting is tayyib. And the opposite, Allah calls gambling filth. Allah calls alcohol filth. Allah calls intercourse outside of marriage filth. In fact, one of the verses in the Quran literally mentions the same verse, the same noun of khabith when it comes to the people of Qawm Lut. Allah says, Allah called the actions of the people of Lut, He called it khabaith, khabith. He literally called it khabith. And Allah is telling us the tayyib and the khabith are not the same. And so even if laws have been passed, even if it is politically incorrect or correct, it doesn't change the sharia of Allah. The tayyib is tayyib and the khabith is the khabith. And so when it comes to deeds, when it comes to actions, the pure actions are that which are pleasing to Allah and everything other than this are impure. When it comes to ethics, when it comes to values, who decides what is virtuous and who decides what is impious? Allah says in the Quran, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been sent. Why? Yuhillu lahum al-tayyibat wa yuharrimu alayhim al-khaba'ith. He has been sent to preach and make halal the pure and to make the khabith impure. 
So the Sharia tells us what is filthy, and the Sharia tells us what is pure. The Sharia has come to distinguish. By the way, there's a very interesting point here, and that is, what if we didn't know the Sharia? But what if before the Sharia comes down? Does this mean we don't know that murder is khabith? That qawmi lut actions are khabith? No. Listen to the ayah. يُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثِ The tayyib is tayyib even before Allah revealed the revelation. And the khabith is khabith even before Allah revealed the revelation. So murder is evil. Even if you didn't know of a sharia, murder is going to be evil. Taking Care of your elderly parents is a virtue, even if the Sharia hasn't told you it's a virtue. But what the Sharia comes, it teaches you what you know to be true. And in case your fitra has been corrupted, in case you don't know the truth, the Sharia will teach you the truth. Sometimes society has gone corrupt. Sometimes khabith and tayyib, you don't know because your society has switched the two. Racism was considered to be normal for the bulk of human history. The notion that one race is better than another, the notion that one group of people is better than the other, this was the default in all of society until Allah revealed the Sharia. And the Prophet ﷺ said, all of you are equal, all of you are from the sons of Adam, and all of you are from dust. Adam came from dust. So the Sharia taught us tayyib and khabith. Even though before the Sharia came, if you really thought, you would understand this point. But without the Sharia, who's going to judge? So, Point number three, ethics, virtue, the Sharia teaches us. Point number four, khabith and tayyib, when it comes to eating and drinking. The Sharia has made the tayyib halal and the khabith haram. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhar rusulu kulu min al-tayyibat. O prophets, eat the tayyibat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnakum. Eat from the tayyib of what we have given you. So the Sharia has come to teach us what is tayyib and khabith when it comes to food and drink. And the final point we'll mention for today, tayyib and khabith when it comes to our rizq. What is haram to earn? What is halal to earn? what is filthy to earn, what is pure to earn, and what is impure to earn, the Sharia has come. One of our scholars of the past, Hassan al-Basri, he said, if I were to give one coin that I have earned from pure money in sadaqah, it is more beloved to me than a hundred thousand gold coins that have some filth in them. One pure coin. One poor coin that I know is halal. If I give it for the sake of Allah, it is more beloved to me than a hundred thousand gold coins. I don't know some haram and halal mixed in it. I don't want that. So the Sharia has come to encourage tayyib in our earning as well. Even if everybody's involved in riba, everybody's involved in haram, everybody's involved in cheating, it doesn't matter. لا يستوي الخبيث والطيب ولو أعجبك كثرة الخبيث. This ayah is a marker for us. It is a litmus test for us when it comes to our beliefs, when it comes to our actions, when it comes to our ethics and values, when it comes to our food and drink, when it comes to our source of income. It doesn't matter what the society is doing. It doesn't matter what the majority are doing. The majority could be right, could be wrong. Frankly, most of the time, the majority are wrong. The Sharia has come to teach us what is tayyib and what is khabith. And with that knowledge, we then base our actions on it. I conclude by mentioning a tafsir of Ibn Abbas to this ayah. Ibn Abbas said, the khabith and the tayyib in this ayah, it is actually an indication of the mu'min and the kafir. And Allah is saying, the mu'min and the kafir are never the same even if the quantity of kuffar is overwhelming it is preponderous it's too much doesn't change the fact every mu'min is more beloved to Allah and worth all of those who reject Allah la yastawi al-khabith wa tayyib the kafir and the mu'min are never the same even if the quantity of those who reject Allah is much more Allah's love will come upon the tayyib so our job is to be tayyib in our iman tayyib in our actions tayyib in our verse virtue, tayyib in our food, tayyib in our earnings. When we are tayyib in all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us tayyib in our iman and Allah will make us mu'mins. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that protection and love and to save us from the khubth and khaba'ith and we'll continue tomorrow inshaAllah ta'ala.